Gainesville, a brand new game day experience instilled by new head coach Urban Meyer. This is called the Gator Walk as the members of the 2005 Gator football team enter the swamp. And we invite you inside as well, where you will join more than 90,000 who have gathered here for this first SEC meeting between these two, the Volunteers of Tennessee and the Gators of Florida. It is a warm, muggy evening. We welcome you to Gainesville, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist, along with Todd Blackledge and Tracy Wolfson. Over the last 15 years, this rivalry has evolved in one of, into one of the most intense in all of college football. In the early years, it was owned by Florida. You can mention Steve Spurrier anytime you want right now, but the keel has been even in the last four years. Tennessee has won three of four, including the last two visits here. Tonight, however, a new ingredient into this bitter stew, the Urban Meyer experience, as the new head coach takes the field for the first time, his first taste of Tennessee, and his first taste of the S. EC. It'll be interesting, Tom. Yeah. But so far, Urban has pushed all the right buttons with this team, with former players, the alumni, the whole Gator Nation. But tonight is significant because we get to start to answer that one lingering question that is still out there. How will this Urban Meyer system, the spread option offense, work in the SEC against the kind of defenses he'll face week in and week out? No better way to test it than against these Tennessee Volunteers who are very physical and very fast. Florida has won its first two, albeit not Tennessee. Tennessee won its first two weeks ago against UAB. In that game, Eric Ainge got the start. He was ineffective. He was replaced by senior Rick Clawson, and it will be Clawson who gets the start tonight. Eric Ainge is a very talented quarterback. I think he'll still be a star at the University of Tennessee in the future. But right now, Rick Clawson is a better fit for this Tennessee offense for the simple reason that he has a little more maturity and a little more willingness to take what the defense gives him. Because of that, the team moves a little more effectively with him at the helm. That's why he's starting tonight. We'll see Eric Ainge probably the third series, but I think unless this game goes really bad for Tennessee, the ball game will be in the hands of Rick Clawson. Can Tennessee make it three in a row in the swamp? The answer coming up in the next three and a half hours. Stay with us. This is a lot. And when you do, you're welcomed by the roar of one of the loudest crowds in all of college football. And for the first time tonight, Urban Meyer gets to experience this. Here are the Gators of Florida. Tennessee and Florida. Kick is next. Kind of a bunch formation for Florida. Breaking the huddle to Urban Meyer, a big guy on special teams, like to change things up from week to week. And the kick from Wilbur. This will be Inky Johnson at the five yard line. Fumble. He recovers it, but he's dropped at the 17 yard line. Marcus Manson, third string running back, wearing number two, is down on special teams. Well, a lot of nervous energy in a game like this. Inky Johnson trying to make something happen early along. Nowhere to go. Good coverage by the Gators. Well, I thought he had dropped it. He did not. Here is Rick Dawson. Older brother Casey, four-year starter at Tennessee. Rick started his career at LSU. He had one start there. This is only his fourth start at Tennessee. And he'll go deep on first down to Hannon. And that was a possible catch. A little bit outside on the throw, trying to loosen up this Florida pass defense right away. I think one of the real things Tennessee has to prove in this game is that their receivers can beat man coverage because Florida has some excellent man cover corners. That's the best one right there, D. Webb. Second down, 10. Receivers are bunched to the left side on second down. Toss, left side, Gerald Briggs Jr. Out near the 25-yard line. Nice opening run. Now let's take a look at this volunteer offense. Up front at Sears, Smith, Richie Gandy, 
getting his first start of the year. He's been injured all summer. Cody Douglas and Albert Tawina. Riggs and Anderson in the backfield and Hannon, C.J. Faton join the tight end, Chris Brown. Third and two. You mentioned the injury to Gandy. Rob Smith was full of former starting center last week, or in the first game, I should say, against UAB. He's back to left guard, his more natural position. Clawson. Oh, he's under pressure. Called down all the way back at the 10 by Jarvis Heron. We're going to see a lot of pressure defenses by both of these teams. Jarvis Herring, the strong safety, is coming from up top. He is coming all the way. He's got outside contain, and he never lost his outside position. That's why he was able to make the sack on Rick Clawson. A bootleg, you expect that guy to chase and not stay at home. Britton Colquitt, the latest of the kicking Colquitts, his second punt of the year. Beautiful. And it is beautiful. Chases Vernell Brown all the way back to the 31. And here's Brown, the senior, number 16. A 54-yard punt by the redshirt freshman Britton Colquitt. His brother, Dustin, graduated a year ago. There's Antonio Reynolds, who was downfield. 12 on the return, but a fine effort by Colquitt. They said that the one thing they haven't been able to get him to do is turn the punts over. Well, that first one turned over beautifully. Chris Leak has thrown a touchdown pass in every game he has started for the University of Florida. Make this his 24th start. He's 15 and 8 as a starter. And you look at the uh, spread offense of Urban Meyer. Play fake, Leak left side. Chad Jackson has the catch. <laughs> Reached up and took it away. He took it away from a freshman. Gerard Mayo, the freshman linebacker who's in there because of the injury to Jason Mitchell, was in good position, but he's going against a very talented receiver in Chad Jackson. Watch the protection. They're going to fake the play action. Good protection for Leak, and then he just throws it up for his guy. When you have confidence in a receiver, you give him a chance to make plays. Deshaun Wynn is alongside Chris Leak. He gets the toss and comes left. He's got blocking hat. And Wynn, who had over 100 last week, is all the way down to the 20. There is a yeah. flag at the 35. It's going to come back because Tate Casey, who got a monster block, turned up field a hair too soon. He came in motion to block inside, and he got a great block, but he turned up field just a half a step too soon. This is the big question Dan Mullen had. How would they guard the four or five receiver sets? Dan Mullen, the offensive coordinator. Here's Dallas Baker. Baker inside the 33-yard line. The two pre-snap penalties on Florida in the early going. Here's Leak. Pressured down at the 50. Inky Johnson in chorus. Johnson number 29 shot in from the left side. I think Chris Leak knew that there was pressure coming, but he didn't have anybody to open to throw the football to right away. And then when he did try to reload, it was too late. Again, this is a fast, fast Tennessee defense. Inky Johnson, one of the extra defensive backs that's in there. And a couple different defensive packages we'll see. Three down linemen right now for Tennessee with six defensive backs on the field. Sacks are even at one apiece. That was a loss of 10. It's third and 22. Two wides to the right side. There's a slot receiver right. Four-man rush from the corner. They got Leak again. Back to the 41. Jason Allen, they disguise the coverage and send Allen on the blitz. Well, one of the problems when you have an empty backfield, you don't have an extra blocker. Jason Allen is right here. He's going to come on the pressure. The line is going to block that way, and nobody is in the backfield to pick up the extra rusher. Now, ideally, either the left guard or left tackle, if he sees that, can fan out to pick him up. But again, very fast off the edges on two consecutive plays for Tennessee. That will bring on Eric Wilbur to punt it away. Jonathan Hefney is back to return it. Florida excels at punt coverage. And here is the punt taken by Hefney at the 20. It didn't excel this time, and Hefney with a collision with Eric Wilbur, the putter. Yeah, I don't think, I think the reason Eric Wilbur made the tackle was because he didn't kick it where the coverage was running. The coverage ran right, he kicked it left. He said, I better make up for my mistake.
Briggs heads to the bench. Britton Colquitt comes on. His father, Craig, of course, was uh, the first of the kicking Colquitts. Then his cousin, Jimmy. Last year, his brother, Dustin. And here is Brighton with his third kick. Britton, rather. Into the end zone, it'll be a touchback. First thrust across midfield, but no damage. Florida has the ball when they come back. There's a gain of 16, a first down at midfield. Changing the play. Chris Leak looking to the sideline, getting a signal. Tennessee threatening a blitz. There's a hand to Keaston Moore. Shoots through right tackle across the 40, down to the 35. Another big gain. And that's a gain of 14 as uh, Florida moving the ball now. When you talk about what are the keys for Florida in this game, they've got to execute this offense at top speed. So far, we've seen a pretty good job of that. The second thing, this offensive line must protect Chris Leak. Now, part of that is him calling the right protections and knowing where the pressure is coming from. Defensively, that front seven has to stop the Tennessee run game. That is most critical for the Gator defense. Gain of 14, first down at the 35. Five wide again, including Deshaun Wynn. Tennessee brings five. There's the hot receiver right side. It's Wynn. Avoids a tackle. Gets a block from Baker, and he's got a first down inside the 20. We've seen Chris Leak look like he doesn't know where the pressure is coming from early. This time, he knows exactly where it's coming from. Right into his face. He knows where to go with the football. Gets rid of it before the hit comes. And Deshaun Wynn turns it into a big play. And again, we see the quick feed and the niftiness of Deshaun Wynn. Deshaun Wynn did not play at all in the first game against Wyoming. A disciplinary reason. Had over 100 yards in the second game against Louisiana Tech. That's a gain of 17. That is the fourth play in excess of 10 yards. And there's a reverse. Look out. <laughs> Andre Caldwell, touchdown, Florida. His second run of the season. The first was for 26 yards. This one for 18. This is a way that you go against a fast defense. Get them running one way and come back the other way. Beautifully played. Chris Hedlund is on for the extra point. He missed two last week in the win over Louisiana Tech. Philip Fulmer, unhappy look on his face. The extra point is up and good. Well, here's Caldwell right here. Now looks like it's coming this way. Watch the Tennessee defense all chase. And then the reverse comes back around this way. Excellent execution at full speed. Show the option. Get that defense running and then come back the other side. And then at the very end, Dallas Baker gets the key block right at the corner of the end zone to score Caldwell. Perfect design. Perfect time to call it. Gators on the board first. Loss of two at second and 12. Well, we got Timmy back and glad we did. Here's Ainge. Oh boy, he drilled that yeah. ball and that is a perfect pass and a first down Tennessee at the 44. But it all started with outstanding protection up front because that enabled Eric Ainge to survey the defense. He started working left on this play and came all the way back to the right. Watch the protection up front. And watch Eric Ainge start by looking this way and then come all the way back to the other side of the formation. He's reading left, it's not there, but he still has time to come back to the deep in route on the backside. Catch is made by Josh Briscoe, a true freshman out of Shelby, North Carolina. That is his first catch in a volunteer uniform. A gain of 16, it's first down at the 44. Ainge, quick flip, has it completed the 39-yard line, right in front of Jarvis Herring. Chris Brown, the tight end, his third catch of the year. Here's Herring. Uh, he's, a, he's a, I think, could be used as an example of uh, Urban Meyer's philosophy. Jarvis Herring was the most outspoken when Ron Zook was let go a year ago and uh, really blew up the program. 
and had some discipline issues of, of, of his own. Was suspended in the summer of 2004. He bought into Urban Meyer's program and has been a leader for this team all summer and into the fall. Second down. Ainge into the corner. Diving try. It's incomplete for Chris Hannon inside the 10-yard line. Going after D. Webb again, probably the top cover corner guy for Florida, and Hannon had a step on it. It's a pretty good throw by Ainge and a nice route by Hannon getting by Webb, just not able to come up with that combination. But again, that's, I think, the critical thing for Tennessee, these receivers beating man coverage, getting some separation, and making some big plays down the field. Ainge is three of four. It's third and six. Volunteers trail by seven. Screen pass, left side. That's caught by Arian Foster. And he works it inside the 30 for a first down. It'll be right at the 30, a gain of nine. Reggie Nelson, the junior college transfer, made the catch with Philip Fulmer's team as a first down. This was a nice call by Randy Sanders on third down. They faked the right, came back with a pre-designed screen. And if Reggie Nelson doesn't make this tackle, it might be for a touchdown because he had a lot of space downfield. But they got the first down, and that was the most important thing. Randy Sanders, the coordinator, a former Tennessee quarterback in the mid-'80s. First down and 10. Anderson and Foster in the backfield. Arian Foster this time nothing doing. Marcus Thomas makes the tackle number 44. We just saw Randy Sanders and you know last year in this game and through the first part of the season he had two true freshmen that were playing quarterback and so it forced them and him as the play caller to be very limited in the plays that he called with Eric Gaines. Much different this year now with Eric Gaines in the game. A whole second year in the system much more comfortable with the entire offensive package and able to open up that playbook much more than he was last year for Eric Haynes. Jim Bob Cooter, my favorite name in all of college football. <laughs> Third quarterback. Don't pick your nose, Jim Bob. Second down, 11. Deep left side. Nice catch, Jason Swain, as the defender, Vernell Brown, appeared to have lost his footing. He looked like he slipped, and then it looked like the ball might be a little bit high for Jason Swain. Swain is one of the shorter of the Tennessee receivers at 6'1", a physical guy, but he goes up and makes the nice catch for another first down. Jason Swain, 7-0, the ball at the 16, first down and 10. Swain, 21-year-old junior from Huntsville, Alabama. Three wide to the right, one to the left. Comes the corner rush. And they don't throw the uh, ball in the end zone. The flag is down. Well, two now flags. two of them. Yeah. First one is offsides on Florida. The second one is going to be either holding or pass interference, one or the other, which is a more flagrant foul than the offsides. By far the most effective drive for Tennessee in this ball game. They have gone from the 17 to a second down and goal. The 12th play of the drive coming up, Florida Got the touchdown, the only one we have seen on a reverse Andre Caldwell from 18 yards out. Vern Lundquist, Todd Blackley, Tracy Wilson at the Swamp in Gainesville. Well, Tennessee called the timeout because they had too many guys in the huddle, but I think the real beneficiary was Florida. This defense really getting it taken to them here on this drive. Got a, a much needed rest there with that timeout. Gerald Riggs Jr. is the running back. Four wides, Hannon. C.J. Faton to the left side. Here's Ainge with the change. Ainge goes in the corner, man open. Caught. Touchdown, Tennessee, Brett Smith. Eric Ainge, Brett Smith, his second catch of the year. Great read by Eric Ainge, great pickup on the blitz by the Tennessee offensive line and backs. James Wilhoyd, who missed an extra point in the game last year in Knoxville. 
but then came back to kick a 50 yard game winning field goal gets the extra point here and the sophomore from Oregon leads the volunteers the length of the field he gets the touchdown to Brett Smith we are tied at seven they're going to go for it on fourth and one first big gamble of the game well close see where the where the spot is made I think he got it No, he did not. Whoa. No measurement. How about that? Well, you're you're saying let's go behind our most experienced lineman, Mike DeGore, the center, but you're going right at the strength of the Tennessee defense. Mahalona and Harrell got underneath. They had the better leverage. The linebackers came over the top. Chris Leak not able to squirt forward for the first down. I think Urban Myers reacting to the spot. He disagreed with where they had spotted the ball. No measurement. On down. It's first down Tennessee in the 7-7 game. Left side. Gerald Wiggs Jr. Burnell. Brown. Well, Dan Eric Ainge, I started to say Danny. Old habits. <laughs> old habits. Eric Ainge led them on that 83-yard drive for the touchdown and no doubt has earned a battlefield promotion. Right, and I really thought that they would go back to Clawson. And at the time, I thought it was a mistake because I don't like the idea of going back and forth with quarterbacks in a big game, particularly on the road. But Eric Ainge, in his second possession, earned himself uh, the right to keep playing here in the first half. Second and two, 7-7 seven, seven game, under seven to go before halftime. This is Riggs, and it's another Tennessee first down. Oh, proverbial moving the pile. It's going to the north. Eric Ainge's dad is here, his mom, that's his dad, Doug. Wife Diane is here as well. They come from Beavers in Oregon. The fabulous Ainge family. Doug Ainge, quite an athlete as well. And Eric Ainge, who entertained thoughts of going to BYU on a basketball scholarship where his uncle Danny excelled. First down and 10. Oh, my goodness. All the way to the 11-yard line, Riggs. 17-yard game. Three runs in a row, all three to the left side of the Tennessee offensive line. Behind Aaron Sears, blocking over here. Rob Smith, watch the guard pull around to get a block. This is power football, vintage Tennessee power football. They collapse the backside. Cody Douglas, the guard, pulls around in front. Wide receivers blocking downfield, and they're just saying, hey, Florida, we're going to just pound on you here for a while. Gain of 17. And off to Riggs, he Same breaks play. the first tackle and uh, gets it to the nine. That's about it. Three go wide to the right side, one comes left. You would expect zone defense here, try to keep it in front and force a field goal. Three-man rush for Gators. Ainge wants to pull up and throw, fires it. It's caught at the one yard line. Oh my goodness. It looks like Brett Smith made the catch. What a throw by Eric Gaines. On the move under duress. It was only a three man rush and that enabled Ainge to get outside the pocket and make the throw right at the goal line. Replay is being used in the Southeastern Conference. Uh, look at Urban Myers pointing up to the booth. He wants it reviewed. And it looks like it's going to be. So for the first time tonight, the replay is in operation. And the reaction you hear is from the crowd because they have just shown the replay on the uh, Jumbotron. After review, video evidence shows that the ball hit the ground. 
See, I think that's right. They and got that, it and right. And they should change the call on that. You know, the guys on the field, they make the call the way they think they can. It's a bang-bang play. They have the technology to look at it again. And instead of giving the ball to Tennessee on the one-yard line, which would have been a mistake, they force them to try a field goal. So replay works. Very reminiscent of a call made in the uh, Vanderbilt Ole Miss game this afternoon in Nashville. That game won by Vanderbilt is James Wilhoyt, one of two this year, made from 47, missed from 46, this from 37 to break the tie, and it's blocked. It is blocked. What a turnaround. You get the favorable call on the replay. You make them settle for the field goal, and then you get the block. D. Webb, their best cover corner, coming quickly off the edge for the block. Talk about momentum swings in a ball game. Special teams play. Here's Webb on the end. He's going to come in and take a clean shot at the football. Good start. He doesn't get hit. And he gets his right hand, reaches out in front of the football. Urban Meyer urging his players to not get involved in excessive celebration. Last year at Utah, Urban Meyer's team blocked nine kicks, seven punts, and two field goals. Playing pretty well. Why the change to Clawson on that final drive? We've got two quarterbacks. We're going to play both of them. Uh, Rick took us down in a two minute in the first ball game. Eric is playing very well, but we're we're pleased with both of those guys. So will we still see both of them in the second half? Talk about it and see. Thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck. All right, Tracy, thank you. That is the end of the first half with our score notched at seven. Let's go to Tim Brando in our New York studio. Indeed, it is Saturday night in the swamp. We welcome you back. Vern Lundquist, Todd Blackledge, Tracy Wolfson. 7-7 seven, seven ball game. Urban Myers debut as an SEC coach in league competition. His team scored first. Tennessee came back and tied it up on a catch by Brett Smith. Here is Andre Caldwell. He scored the Florida touchdown on a reverse. Recall that Florida won the toss, deferred until this happened. They will return this kickoff from James Wilhoyt. Andre Caldwell comes near side and he is spilled as he gets out near the 20 yard line. 7-7 ball game as we get set to the uh, to start the third quarter. What should we look for here? Well, I think this first possession for Florida is very important. When you look at that first half, yardage wise, the first quarter was dominated by Florida. The second quarter was dominated by Tennessee. But the most unsettling thing for Florida is in that second quarter, Tennessee really started to control the line of scrimmage. And so this possession, I think, very important for Chris Leak to uh, to get things going with this offense. And Andre Caldwell, who returned the kickoff, is down. And you can see the, the total yards fairly similar, time of possession similar, the rushing yards, the big difference in that first half. Florida just, after a few good runs by Deshaun Wynn, averaged only 1.5 yards per carry in that first half. Three wides to the left, two to the right. Now you see Chris Leak looking over at the bench. Now out left side to Jamel Cornelius. Play clock down to two. Leak under pressure. Watch out from behind. He'll have to run, and he is out of bounds. Popped as he gets to the sideline at the 30-yard line. That'll bring up fourth down. It was Kevin Simon giving chase, and Paris Harrelson, that is P-A-R-Y-S. <laughs> Never forget that story last year, I guess it was. We were talking with him and asking him, why the P-A-R-Y-S? He said, I don't know. Let's ask my mom. Yeah. He picked up the phone and called her. She said, Paris with a Y sounded more masculine than mm -hmm. Paris with an I. Here, 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 here. Eric Wilbur on to punt, fourth and one. This one more effective than his last, but uh, oh, Bobble. Oh, baby, it's Bobble. And it is picked up by the Florida Gators. Jermaine McCollum, one of the twin brothers, Jermaine and Tremaine, and Hefney busted it. 
Well, they had a little strange formation, and they were able to release free down the field. I think this is Daryl Gresham, number 43, who's the first guy to get there. Right as the ball is caught, he makes contact and knocks the ball loose. Gresham knocks it loose, and the Gators come up with a huge break off their punt team. Eric Wilbur following the play. Fumble recovery, first and 10, inside the 30. Here's Leak, play fake. Being chased, got him. That's the fourth sack tonight. Jesse Mahalona got there. Again, this defensive front, the strength of the Tennessee defense, asserted itself in the second quarter. And right when this defense needed a big play, they got it again. Here's Mahalona right now. They go play action, but he just fights his way into the backfield. And when that pressure comes from the inside, it's very hard to get away for a quarterback. It's a lot easier to step up in the pocket if the rush comes outside. But when it comes right up the gut, very difficult to elude. Win six for 23, and he's off 110 yard effort last week. Here's all that movement by the Tennessee defense on third down again. They rush four. Leak belted as he lets it go, and it is caught at the 21-yard line, short of the first down. Jamel Cornelius makes the grab, the junior from Fort Meade, Florida, and Leak really took a shot. Well, he took a shot, and he was confused by the coverage. The defense has done a nice job of giving him different looks, and so he doesn't get his feet set real well. He gets hit. He still comes up with a completion, but not enough for the first down. That brings on a walk-on, a junior, Chris Hetland. He'll try it from 39 yards out. Nick Fleming is the holder. James Smith will snap it. This to break a 7-7 tie. It's good. Is good. That was critical. Uh, to, to, they had to capitalize off of the fumbled punt return. If they would have got nothing out of that possession, it would have been very, very devastating for the Florida team. The fumble recovery by Tremaine McCollum. The field goal for Hetland. It's 10-7. Gators. And they will go from the spread formation after they had called timeout. Ainge at the quarterback. Nobody over the slot receiver at the bottom. I don't know if this is a disguise by the Florida defense or a mistake. Haynes rolling right, under pressure, throws it away, fourth down. Stephen Harris, number 93, not known for his speed, showed a little get up and go on that one. Yeah, he sure did. They had the three down line, six defensive backs in the game, and watch these three big guys. It's only a three-man rush. Jeremy Mincy loses his helmet, but doesn't lose the chase. And Stephen Harris is the guy that forces the throw away. A huge third down stop by the Gator defense. That brings on the freshman redshirt, Britton Colquitt. Fake. Fake. Right oh, side. Oh, my gosh. Intercepted. <laughs> oh, boy. Tony Joyner was the closest man to it. Oh, my gosh. They still get the ball, but they would have had a 10-point lead. And I don't think Philip Fulmer called that. The, the, the expression on his face looks like that was his freshman punter making the decision. When he sees this guy move in, he says, this guy's free, I'm going to throw it. But they baited the freshman punter. Watch him come in. The punter makes the decision. The safety flies out and almost scores a touchdown. They baited the young punter into a huge mistake. On downs after Colquitt misfires on the toss. Here's Florida, the handoff. Does Sean win a flag on the far side? I think it's an illegal motion. There was early movement up front for Florida on that play. Third down, Win starts in motion. He's now alongside Chris Leak. Here comes the pressure, Leak will run. A little dart, he's at the 20. He is down at the 13 with a Gator first down. And look at the animation in the body language of Chris Lee. He's not run the option one time tonight. Everybody wondered, can Chris Leak run the football? Can he take the hit? This is not a designed run, but an excellent decision. The pocket collapses. He sees an opening. He makes Jonathan Hefney miss, and he gets a huge first down with his legs. Second and 20 at the 23. Leak, a 
across the middle caught by Chad Jackson. But that's going to bring up a long third down. Kevin Simon. It was 7-7 at the half. Florida scored first on a reverse. Andre Caldwell, who is now out with what we fear might be a broken leg. Tennessee came back to tie it up on a catch from Brett Smith. It was 7-7 at the half. Then a fumbled punt, really a muffed punt. James Smith forced it. That led to a field goal, 10-7. And now on an uh, errant fourth down pass from the punter, Florida takes over. They now look at a third and 16 at the 19. Here's Leak under pressure. Avoids the sack, but still in trouble. And runs out of bounds. That should ensure a field goal yeah. attempt. Great job by Chris Leak. Now, not very good protection up front. And you see some tired offensive linemen for Florida, but that was only a four-man rush, and that pocket collapsed quickly. But Chris Leak did a good job of preserving the field goal because if he gets sacked right there, they may be out of field goal range. Does a nice job of getting as much as he can get to enable them to try for three more. And that's going to bring on the walk-down, the junior, Chris Hetland, who is one for one tonight, three for three for the season. This will be from 35 yards out to uh, add the lead, add to the lead. Perfect. Well, I'll say this: it's good to be the team in front, but if you're Tennessee, you got to feel pretty good about yourself. Even though Britton Colquitt made a mistake, his defense bailed him out. It's a one possession football game. Spread offense now for Chris Leak and the Gators. On first down from the 30. Sean Wynn charges over the back of his center. That was a good run. From a team that has not had many good runs since the first quarter, that was a very positive run inside for Deshaun Wynn. Now look how close this rivalry has been over the last six games. 145 points for the balls, 150 for the Gators. Yardage per game fairly even, wins three apiece. The point to be made though is Philip Fulmer had not won in four trips down here until 2001, and that was a huge victory. They won it 34-32, and won again in 03. Second down. I think Florida got that playoff. Oh, end of the quarter. There we go. That's the end of three. Our score 13 to 7, Gators. We'll return to Gainesville right after this word from your local station. We begin the fourth quarter. Vern Lundquist, Todd Blackledge, Tracy Wolfson from the swamp. Florida leading 13. To seven. And under Philip Fulmer, you see 15 and 27 record. And this one is uh, Deshaun Wynn. As uh, Florida continues to try and hold on to this football, uh, impressions of the first three. Well, I think it's been a great, hard fought game in terms of defense. I think both defenses played very well. The difference in the game clearly has been Florida's special teams have outperformed Tennessee's special teams. They had a blocked field goal, they had a fumbled punt, then they went for the uh, the fake with Britton Colquitt that, that they missed on fourth and 10. So those special teams' plays has been the difference in this six point ball game so far. Well, it's 13 to 7 right now as uh, we get back to play here early in the fourth quarter, third and one. Leak has Tate Casey going in motion and off to win. He's got the first down after the 43 yard line. I think this drive for Florida is very important if for no other reason, even if they don't score, to change field position and to rest their defense. Third and 19. Now the look over at the uh, sidelines. Matt Kynes, a four string quarterback, is signaling the formation in. And here's a catch by Dallas Baker. Oh, wow. Dallas Baker, who was really the GOAT of the loss last year when he was flagged for a penalty and a personal foul. Big catch. Yeah, big time catch. He's the X receiver, and he normally gets single coverage out here. It's the seam post. It's thrown perfect timing-wise by Chris Leak and a huge conversion on third and long. 
That's a 24 yard gain. Here's Leak back to the near side. It's Baker again, and this time he loses yardage. 10.57 to go in the fourth. Florida 6 of 13 on third downs. Well, the last third down and long, they went to Dallas Baker on the post. Tennessee brings four. Leak will pull up and hot fired. He's got a man open. Jamil Cornelius and another third and huge yep. conversion. The last two third down conversions, both over 10 yards. And both of them because Chris Leak made good decisions. He threw the post to Baker on timing. This time he steps up in the pocket. Thinks about running for a moment, but never takes his eyes off downfield. Watch as he starts to scramble. He sees Cornelius open up and gets the first down with an alert play. That's the second gain of 24 when the need was third and long. First down and 10 at the 20. Win out of the backfield. Again, a four-man rush. Leak goes right, waves, tucks it. Out of bounds at the 15-yard line, chased there by Turk McBride, number 90. You know, you and I have, have, have talked with Chris Leak now for the last two and a half years. I don't recall a player who's blossomed in terms yeah. of his willingness to speak to guys like you and me yeah. that Chris Leak has in the last year. Well, and I credit this coaching staff because they had to start with that way on the field because he never used to talk on the field. They used all silent cadence. He never had to shout and direct traffic with his voice. They've made him be a vocal leader. Second down and five. Keiston Moore is in the backfield. And Keiston Moore tests the middle. He's inside the 15 to the 13 yard line. Uh, Chris uh, always used to pride himself on the amount of film that he watched, but Urban Meyer came in and said, Chris, you're watching it all by yourself. Why don't you watch it with your teammates become a vocal leader and uh, we certainly noticed in our conversation with him Thursday uh, willing to yeah. provide insight laughed and cut up and talked about his experience said he grew up he was not a Florida fan or a Tennessee fan his favorite team was the University of Nebraska yeah option team now he gets to run the option although he hasn't run the option yet tonight <laughs> well, all this talk about Chris Leak running the option hasn't run it on the option one time third and three Right side, he's got another one. He's nine of 10 converting on third downs this evening. Wow. Third down and short. Slot receiver right here. Chris Leak sees him. His favorite target, Chad Jackson. That's easy pitch and catch. That's an option route for the slot receiver. The defender was inside, he breaks outside. And another huge conversion on this drive. First down. Trying to add to a six point lead with 9.06 to go. Low snap. Lee picks it up. Chased by Gerard Mayo. Fires it in the end zone. It is incomplete. Well, that play had some problems from the beginning because of a low snap from Mike DeGore. That kind of disrupted the timing. There was an inside blitz, and that might have affected the snap by DeGore. Tennessee thinking, hey, we got to knock them out of scoring territory right now. They decided to come with pressure on that first down play. Now well, it's a hot, muggy night, and you see some heavy size from that uh, heavy defensive unit. Gasping for breath a little bit and now. They've been is, on the field for a long time. This has been an incredible drive for Florida. And it all happens because you convert on third down. You keep the football. Timeout, Florida. Yeah. They will have one remaining. As they break the huddle, Dallas Baker and uh, Chad Jackson go wide to the right. Cornelius and Kyle Morgan come in. It's Deshaun Wynn, near side. Now that was Wynn in the backfield. He gets the handoff. And Wynn down to the three-yard line. So Kyle Morgan, 28, is the wideout. And Wynn, 21, in the backfield. 
Well, they uh, won their first two games, but they did not excel on third down conversions in those wins over Wyoming and Louisiana Tech, 7 of 25 tonight, 8 of 15. And in those first two games, it wasn't as critical. You know, in a game like this, time of possession is critical because you want to rest your defense. You want to wear out the opposing defense. You want to hold on to the football. And the only way to possess the football is to convert on third down. 15th play of the drive. 1 5. Win behind Leak. Jackson in motion. Here's the rollout. Leak pulls up, throws it away. Paris Harrelson with the pressure. And we're going to see Chris Hetland, I would believe. Yeah, I think that's the smart play. I mean, you've got to go up by nine and make it a two score game. Your defense is rested. They've played extremely well. They've only given up seven points. Get another field goal kickoff and let your defense come out and play. James Smith will snap it. Nick Fleming will hold it. And Chris Hetland will kick it from 19 yards away. And it's perfect. There's a flag down, though. Yes, there is. Two of them, as a matter of fact. Offside. Now you don't take points off the board. I don't think so. I don't think so either. You got three up there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Last time he was here, he led the band in Rocky Top after the Volunteers won. Here's Eric Ainge back to throw. Good protection. Has a man wide open, deep left side at the 38-yard line. Catch made by Robert Meacham. It was a big reef completion for Eric Gange because after starting the game seven for nine and being in a pretty good flow that first half he was three of his next ten so that was a huge completion I think the reason he's still in is because he is the better pure passer and they've got to score twice now they've got to have a little sense of urgency and make some plays throwing the football they don't have to abandon their run but they're going to probably have to make some big plays throwing the football first and ten with under eight to go Keep in the back of your mind that they've used two timeouts. They have only one left. Bad snap. Ainge has to fall on it back uh, at the 20. He learned from last year, you know, that Notre Dame game when he got hurt. Mm. Smart decision. I mean, it, it, they went really far backwards, but. He did the right thing of just falling on that football and not trying to pick it up and make something special happen. Florida threatening blitz right in here. That's what the center's seeing. Richie Gandy again, his first game back. He's so in a hurry to block the blitz that he forgot to make a good snap first. Second and 25. Corner blitz. Ainge hit as he lets it go. He's got a man open. Good coverage by D. Webb on Jason Swain. Third and 25. Well, the blitz came from out here in the corner. I'm not sure that Eric Ainge saw it, but he tried to hit Swain down the sideline. But again, going against the top cover guy, D. Webb. It's a zone defense, and D. Webb is looking back at the quarterback the whole way. And that quarterback, Eric Ainge, took a shot from Vernell Brown. Good thing Vernell only weighs about 160 pounds. It can get noisy in the swamp. Oh, boy. Down to two seconds. Stunts defensively. Ainge steps up. Shovel pass. He got it to Riggs. And Riggs high steps out of a tackle and is out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Now that's a heck of a play by Eric Ainge and Gerald Riggs because even though they didn't get the first down, they got the ball out close to midfield where if Britton Colquitt gets a good punt, they can at least pin Florida down deep. An alert play by Eric Ainge avoiding the sack by Mincy and getting something on that third down play. Fourth down. Britton Colquitt is on to punt. Vernell Brown at the 25. Mm -hmm. 
returnable, but Vernell Brown's going to let that. Oh, he picks it up. And then he is nailed as he gets to the 26 yard line. 42 yard punt, seven on the return. The CBS Sports Line stat of the game, it involves special teams. Yeah, it really does. Tennessee's miscues, a blocked field goal, a fumble on a punt return, a failed fake punt. And on the other side of that, three for three for Chris Hetlin of Florida. Get complete game stats at CBSSportsLine.com. First and ten. Tennessee down by nine. 428 to go. One timeout left. Three-man Gator Rush. Ainge. Far side. That's good for a first down across the 50. Brett Smith, number nine, with the catch. And a gain of 13. Well, Charlie Strong was the defensive coordinator here with the Juan Zook coaching staff. But he had a Notre Dame connection, both to Urban Meyer and this man, Greg Madison. So they are now, Madison and Strong, co-defensive coordinators at Florida. And uh, seems to work well. Here's a quick, oh, brother, Vernell Brown. He'll talk a little smack now. Yeah. <laughs> well, he read it. He was quickly there. He made the sure tackle, and he kept the receiver in bounds. He did a lot of things well on this play. Beat the block, read the play, made the tackle, kept him in bounds, kept the clock going. Because the clock is a friend of the Florida Gators right now. Second and 13. Blitz. Ames chased out of the pocket to the right side. Throws it away. Now the big question is, did that ball get past the line of scrimmage? If it did, there's no penalty. If it did not cross the line of scrimmage, that's intentional grounding. The line of scrimmage is the 49-yard line. Does the ball get past the line of scrimmage? You're allowed to throw it away if you get outside the tackle box. If the ball crosses the line of scrimmage, that's just a good heads-up play by Eric Ainge. Apparently, it did. Third and long again for the Volunteers, who have not been very good on third down tonight. Blitz again. Look out. Got him. Oh, that's intentional ground. Yeah, They're calling sure him is. down. Steve Shaw says he was down. Yeah. So it'll be fourth down. The last time they came with that blitz, the same blitz, Jeremy Mincy came too far inside, and Ainge was able to get outside. This time, he took a little different angle, and Earl Everett didn't lose outside contain and was able to sack him. Back-to-back -back plays, Greg Madison and Charlie Strong said, let's go after the quarterback. And it's now or never for Tennessee on fourth down. Fourth and 24. Charlie Strong, Greg Madison. They apparently will rush three and drop eight. Fourth and 24. From under center, Ainge steps up, drills it. Contact, no flag. Todd McCullough, the senior, the fifth-year linebacker, was in good coverage. Philip Fulmer against first-year SEC coaches coming into this game had won 13 games and lost only three. And those three were to Nick Saban, Mark Richt, Ron Zook. Well, here's Todd McCullough. You see, these guys are so deep. They're saying, hey, let's just don't give up a big play. Todd McCullough's playing the underneath coverage. Gets a deep drop. There is a little contact on his way to the football. Even if the catch is made, it's well short of the first down. Cast a giant shadow. Less than a minute to go. Florida calls time. They're about to go 3-0 under Urban Meyer. one of Urban Meyer's charges as he becomes the head coach at the University of Florida is to rekindle the mystique of the swamp. Well, I think they took a big step in that direction tonight. And I'll tell you my biggest observation of this Florida team right now, they are a much 
more well-conditioned team than they were a year ago. And last year, they, they didn't know how to finish some games the last couple years. This team knew how to finish tonight. They were strong in the fourth quarter on the offensive and defensive lines. On fourth down, Leak is going deep into triple coverage. It's incomplete. It'll come back and go over on downs to the Volunteers. I don't think there were supposed to be two guys running next to each other in the end zone on that play. As you can tell, I mean, this offense still has some kinks to work out, but they gutted out a victory tonight if they hold on here with 50 seconds. I mean, this, they lost their best defensive lineman, Ray McDonald. They lost one of their key receivers in Andre Caldwell. They've had offensive linemen kind of hobbling around throughout the game, and they toughed it out against a bigger team on the offensive and defensive lines in Tennessee. Outstanding defensive performance. Seven points tonight, the fewest against Florida since 1994. 50 seconds to go. Three-man rush. Here's Ainge. He'll run it out of bounds and stop the clock with 42 seconds to go. Well, I've got a little time here for a social note. Our spotter, Joe Castena, will be absent from this booth for the next four weeks. Mm -hmm. Heading back uh, to the Boston area where he is going to marry the lovely Cheryl Dykeman in Woodstock, Vermont, on the 8th of October. South Africa for a honeymoon. What, you're going to miss Tuscaloosa for that? He's going to see some elephants. Yes. Yeah. Just <laughs> not the same ones we're going to see. Oh, goodness. Second and four, Joe. Congratulations. See you in a month. Almost intercepted. And of course, we have our, our normal crew back as we, Todd and I, begin our sixth year together. And Matt Sign is back with us. And Santa Monica Chuck Gardner. Good to have the crew back. Well, Philip Fulmer's team back to back against top 10 teams for the first time ever, ever under Fulmer on the road. Back to back on the road. They've got to play at LSU. Next Saturday night, third and four here. LSU off today, so they are resting up in anticipation of their home opener. Ainge almost intercepted. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Brandon Seiler, number 40. You know, I don't know if they have a quarterback controversy. I don't think it's that because you don't have a controversy if the two guys get along and work well together. And Rick Clawson and Eric Haynes do. I just think you have some indecision. You know, you, you, you come into a game like this. I thought we would see Rick Claus in the majority of the game because of his game management. They decided to go with Eric Haynes because he seemed like he had the hot hand. I just don't think you can play and win big games going with who has the hot hand. At some point, I think a team needs to see on third down and nine who the guy is that's going to make the play. And they don't have to try to guess which guy that's going to be. On fourth down, here's Ainge. That one tipped incomplete. Goes over on downs. It was D. Webb. It's been a costly victory for these guys, Absolutely. though. Ray McDonald, we don't know the severity of the right knee. Andre Colwell with a right leg injury. Both out with injuries, and there's Ray McDonald on crutches. But even without Ray McDonald, the Florida defense did what they had to do. Their front seven defended the run extremely well, held Tennessee to well under, over, or under 100 yards. And their pass defense, that was the big question. Could Tennessee beat their man coverage? The answer was an emphatic no tonight. You see Urban Meyer, you think he's enthusiastic on the sidelines? Dan Mullen, the offensive coordinator, said, I'm the calm one. I'm here to just uh, take care of the head coach. There's a penalty flag down. Yep. I think they've got offsides or something. Yeah, declined. Penalty is declined. Run the clock. clock. starts. <laughs> Steve Shaw showing the wisdom of the ages. Philip Fulmer, they won the last two here, not to be tonight. It was 7-7 at the half. Big second half for the Gators of Florida. 
Urban Meyer now coaching in his 50th game. He's 42 and 8 through the first 50. And he's 1 and 0 oh in the SEC. Our player of the game, Florida quarterback Chris Leak, no interceptions, no touchdowns tonight. First win against Tennessee. We go down to Tracy Wolfson. Thanks, Vern. Urban, congratulations. Welcome to the SEC. So what do you think? Minute. That's it, though. That was two very good defenses playing. What an atmosphere. That's as nice as atmosphere has ever been in. Thanks so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for doing our game. I've never had a head coach. Thank you for doing this game. <laughs> it's only his 50th game. Remember that. <laughs> Florida wins it 16 to 7. They're 1 and 0 and they trail only the Vanderbilt Commodores in the SEC. For Tracy Wilson, Todd Blackledge. I'm Vern Lundquist saying good night from the swamp where the Gators get a muggy win. We'll see you from somewhere next week.